Good afternoon. This is Tim Andrus for Art History 209. In our last discussion, we talked a little bit about the ideas of style and iconography. And I wanted to give you an example of how we might talk about these two related concepts in prehistoric art. And I wanted to show it to discuss it with you in terms of the so-called Venus figures. What we're looking at here is probably the most famous of the Venus figures from prehistory, the so-called woman from Willendorf in Austria. You can see that it's made out of limestone and that it's pretty small. It's uh, four, just barely four and a half inches high, so it would fit very neatly in the palm of your hand. You can see that it is in the shape of a woman and one theory about these kinds of things is that uh, migratory people may have picked up in their journey rocks or stones that suggested to them a particular shape, in this case a pregnant woman, uh, and then begun to articulate the features to draw them out more clearly. Uh, what we see here is a woman uh, with no facial features. Uh, her head has been uh, abstracted and covered with um, a textured design. You see, see that she has her sexual organs especially have been emphasized. She has large breasts and very small twig-like arms and small legs and she has a large belly which indicates that she's pregnant. Pregnancy you would imagine would be a very uh, important issue for prehistoric people where survival is of the first order. So the continuity of the clan of the people through uh, rearing children is very significant. And what we see here is may, what may be some kind of totemic uh, device or um, some kind of ritual item, a talisman intended to promote fertility. Uh, there's one other explanation for this that we'll touch on. So if we think about this as being what we call a fertility figure or something that is designed in some way to uh, enhance or promote um, the bearing of children within the clan, we see why this work of art takes the shape that it does. It emphasizes everything that is related to childbearing and de-emphasizes everything that's not. And what we see here is how this is expressed stylistically in the object. You see that everything takes the shape of an egg or a circular form. And even the egg itself, of course, is a fertility symbol, it being the uh, beginning of new life for all species. So the shape of her breasts and the shape of her belly and the shape of her legs and even her, the shape of her entire body can all be inscribed inside, inside of an egg. The fact that she's not identifiable as a person only emphasizes the universality of the um, of the uh, of the object, and what we call this 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 patterning that we see inside of the work of art is a motif, M O T I F, and a motif is a pattern, and it becomes the kind of stylistic. Uh, vehicle which gives unity and expression to this work of art. We know she's pregnant uh, because we see this kind of thing in other figures. Here is um, a relief sculpture from a cave and this is another term you should know. A relief is a kind of uh, sculpture which is not uh, in the round. The Venus of Willendorf is a round sculpture. We can turn it around in our hands. It's very small but it's still a, a round sculpture. It's developed in all three dimensions whereas a relief sculpture is attached to another surface. Here we see yet another pregnant woman and, and we see that she places her hand on her belly, a gesture that is still um, often used. And in her other hand, her right hand, she holds a horn, which would be another fertility symbol. At Thanksgiving time, you will see a bunch of images of so-called cornucopias. Well, this is a cornucopia that she has in her hand. It is a cornucopia means horn of plenty 
and it identifies um, uh, fertility. And of course, this could also suggest male fertility and the union of male and female fertility coming together into a, um, a single um, image. Uh, also, again, the figure is anonymous. Her face has not been articulated, uh, and it, or it might have even been defaced, judging by how it looks in this picture at some point, um, because the universality and generality of the message is, what, is what's important. We can see this uh, universality, or, or excuse me, let me back up. We can see this idea of a motif showing up again and again inside of these Venus figures. There are numerous ones of them, uh, made over uh, many thousands of years, um, and they all carry uh, similar features. Here is one, and here is another one seen from both sides. Again, it has the same kinds of features that we see in the Venus of Willendorf, but they're even more exaggerated. Her breasts and her hips are even uh, more emphasized, and her arms um, are even less emphasized. Here is yet another one. This figure does not have a head. Uh, it's made out of a little piece of ivory. Uh, it has a little loop instead, which suggests that maybe it could have been worn uh, through uh, on a necklace or some kind of string that could be tied um, or affixed to something. And thus it would also identify itself as a... Um, it could be used as an identifier of the clan identity uh, uh, to signal one group of people from another. I want to show you another example briefly of, of also a way in which um, form and content come together. In the Venus figures, the form and content merge through the, mo the ovoid motif, which uh, communicates fertility. Here, uh, and the lion human from Holenstein Stadel and that was discovered in Germany. And again, it's about 30,000 years ago, so this places it uh, as part of the Paleolithic period. Uh, we see a figure that has been carved from mammoth ivory, and you can see how the, the person who sculpted this uh, has followed the form of the ivory. We can still see the, the kind of gentle curve from the feet to the head of the, the tusk from the mammoth. Uh, it depicts uh, something that is a figure with a lion head. It has been argued that this could either be a like a, a man-lion hybrid, so it's one new like mythological creature, or it could show someone wearing a lion mask, uh, suggesting a kind of shamanistic ritual where someone would dress as a lion and thus take on the spirit of the lion. Uh, you can see that it's a man. There is a um, uh, the male genitalia have been broken off. What I would suggest to you is that the shape of the tusk also communicates part of the uh, the meaning of this piece, which would be uh, masculinity and power. The shape of the tusk is also has a kind of a phallic shape, and thus it fits in with this idea of masculinity and power, which whatever else may be going on here is what is of interest to the um, to the artisan. So while the Venus of Willendorf uh, expresses a kind of feminine side of this, here we, in the lion human, the lion man, we see the other side, the masculine principle being expressed. Uh, furthermore, in both cases, there's a, a kind of anonymity and universality, whereas the Venus of Willendorf has no face, and as do the other Venuses, they uh, have no face or even uh, or very schematic face that does not indicate any kind of uh, particular features. Here, there is a head, but it's a lion head, so it's not it doesn't designate a portrait of a particular person, but it suggests that somehow this would inhabit a kind of... Uh, universal attitude. We have to keep in mind that that in all likelihood the belief system, whatever kind of religious practice these people have, we know almost nothing about it, about them because they have no written languages and so there's no way for us to investigate their religion or beliefs. Even though we know so little about them though, we, we can sort of suggest or, or surmise that they are probably animist 
in their attitude, animism being the belief that a kind spirits inhabit all aspects of the natural world. So in the lion human, uh, here we see the spirit of a lion e either inhabiting the man or the spirit of a man inhabiting a lion. But in either case, there's kind of a permeability between the spiritual world and the natural world, which is indicative of, uh, of prehistoric belief, and especially from this Paleolithic period. But in both cases, what I want you to remember is that, that the shape of the work of art, the, the shape, the style of it communicates its meaning, whether it be femininity or masculinity, um, fertility or power.